Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand to my, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you have come to believe, or have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did this and many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you, ha you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I love when everything falls into place. Um, in the very beginning of the liturgy during the penitential rite, how Deacon Paul was saying about how Christ's wounds heal us. That's exactly what I'm preaching on today. We're talking about how Christ's wounds heal us. We have this remarkable story about Thomas touching, touching the wounds of Christ. And of course, after the resurrection, Jesus had a glorified body. And we see that the apostles in other sto gospel stories, they thought Jesus was a ghost. They didn't recognize Jesus at first because his appearance was so brilliant. And yet, even though Jesus has a glorified body, he still has his wounds. In our gospel today, Jesus shows the apostles his wounds in his hands, his feet, and his side. And why is that so important? Why is it important that Jesus shows his wounds? Unless I see the wounds, I will not believe, Thomas says. And there's this remarkable image, uh, this painting by Caravaggio. And if you know about Caravaggio, he loved contrast, the, the dark, the white, and how they all play together. But the remarkable painting by Caravaggio of Thomas very close to the risen Lord and placing his finger right into the side of Christ. And you can see Jesus' Jesus's face is very docile, very peaceful. He has that peace about him. But 
Thomas, you can see his eyes light up as he believes in that very moment. Jesus has a glorified body after the resurrection. However, he still retains his wounds, and he loves us through his wounds. I'm sure that some of you are familiar with the spiritual writer Henry Nouwen, and he has this famous spiritual book called The Wounded Healer, about how Jesus heals us through his wounds, but then also Jesus teaches us as well how to heal through our own wounds as well. When you think of somebody that's going through a certain suffering or a certain pain, you can have more compassion, more empathy for them if you've been through that same pain or something similar to that pain. Isn't that right? When, when we approach somebody that we want to comfort, somebody that we want to walk through their suffering with, we can have that compassion and that, and that empathy because we've been through that pain and suffering as well. And we imitate Jesus because we become wounded healers as well. Very often, especially within our own society in our day and age, we're tempted by what is called the prosperity gospel. And what is the prosperity gospel? All it is is that saying, if I follow Jesus, then I'm going to get whatever I want. Or uh, probably a, a little bit more poignant of a saying, why am I suffering when I am a good person? Or why is this person who who is, has been a good person all their life, why are they suffering? And we fall into that temptation of the prosperity gospel, saying that if I follow Jesus, then I shouldn't suffer. And that's, even though that is a very nice thought, that's not what Jesus is calling us to. I myself have fallen into that category myself. I remember when I broke my leg, the first thing that I asked myself and I, as I cried out in pain is, why me? Why me? Right? I think all of us have that human intuition to say that. But Jesus does not save us to get rid of our suffering and our pain. But as C.S. Lewis says, he, he comes to give meaning to our suffering and to our pain. And we think of all the mystics and the saints who have lived in their lives, when they got closer to Jesus, they didn't suffer less, they actually suffered more. Be and yet they remain joyful in their suffering because now their suffering has meaning. Their suffering didn't cease to become suffering, it was painful. But all of a sudden, they knew that they were in union with Jesus suffering, who is a wounded healer. We think about the suffering of more modern saints. This is not just saints of old time past, but more modern saints, like Saint Padre Pio. He himself, you know, he, uh, he had that beautiful gift of suffering the wounds of Christ. And then also Saint Mother Teresa, the suffering that she went through in her life. Or Saint John Paul II, who had an assassination attempt on him. Saint Therese of Lisieux in her very young life, how she suffered as well. And today, as, as we remember Divine Mercy Sunday, St. Faustina Kowalska, who had the visions of Jesus and the Divine Mercy, the image that I'm wearing on my chasuble, the, in the corner we have the image of Divine Mercy. St. Faustina in her life suffered greatly. And why? Because she got closer to Christ. She became assimilated into that understanding of being a wounded healer. It doesn't mean that we, can, we can't pray that Jesus gets rid of our suffering. In fact, we pray for healing very often. It's important to pray to the Lord to alleviate that suffering and pain. But at the same time, when we're going through that suffering and pain, we know that Jesus, because of his suffering, his pain, gives ours meaning. And this is the message of divine mercy. 
we place ourselves in the mercy of God. We see the rays, the red and the white rays, coming forth from Jesus' heart, his heart that was pierced in his suffering as he loves us, and we say, Jesus, I trust in you. I, you may not understand the suffering that you're going through. You may not understand the suffering that you're in. But yet, I trust in you, Lord. And your mercy is sufficient for me. Lord, help our suffering and our pain. Give, give it meaning. Bring us closer to you, Jesus, as we pray. I invite you to respond, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you.